Prior to doing my sedation training, I had to take an ACLS course. Now that stands for Advanced Cardiac Life Support. So if you want to think of it this way, it's kind of like CPR on steroids. So there's just so much more to it. It's way more robust. It covers so much information and drugs and shocking people and approaches to resuscitating people. Way more in depth than your basic healthcare provider CPR. Now I had had my healthcare level CPR for many years. I'd done it several times and I felt pretty comfortable with it. And what I can tell you is I had a false sense of security about just how prepared I was for an emergency in my office after taking that course. So you go there, you learn that you're doing, you know, 30 and 2 and checking the pulse and breathing and calling 911 and you feel like, okay, I got a pretty good handle on this. I think I could manage this. When I went to ACLS, believe me, my eyes were open and I was nervous just being in the room. I was sweating watching the mannequin. That is how scary this was to see how I'd been practicing in my office and how prepared I was, or unprepared, I should say, for any medical emergencies. So there's a lot from ACLS that you may never employ, and that's fine. So you may not be doing sedation where you have a pulse oximeter and you're monitoring heart rhythms and you're looking to give certain shocks or drugs to people in various cardiac states. But there's a lot that you can take away from this. And the big thing, like I said, is just changing your mindset about how you view a medical emergency. So ACLS has this overarching theme where there's a team approach and a team leader. And lucky you, you get to be the team leader in the emergency situation. So you will have a staff around you and you should be doing regular drills with these staff members, basically simulating a condition in a patient. So it could be as simple as syncope. So the patient faints, what do we do? You should have roles assigned to your staff so that they know automatically if there's an emergency and you tell them what it is or you tell them their role, they're going to know how to do it. So if you have an assistant and she or he is trained in CPR and they're comfortable doing CPR, then that may be their role when the emergency comes and they know that. So when the emergency happens, you say, okay, you're going to do chest compressions. You may have someone else that you've told is going to be calling 911. You might have someone who's going to be taking notes if you've taken this course and you're going to be administering drugs. Someone bag masking the patient. Everyone has a role and it should be delegated ahead of time if possible, or at least, sorry, learned ahead of time so that when you delegate it at the time of the emergency, everyone knows what to do and there's less confusion. That is how you efficiently manage a patient. Now, something as simple as, say, airway management is something that you'll get some exposure to in ACLS. So there's all different types of airways that I had no idea about. So let's say I would have had a patient go unconscious on me who lost their airway. Well, what good is that if I'm trying to bag mask them and they have no airway? The air is not going in them. There's just not being effective. So you'll learn some skills, say an oropharyngeal airway or a, a king airway, something that you can put in there that will be easy enough to do in your office that may be very beneficial for a patient in a serious situation. I often feel that as dentists, we focus so much on the teeth that we take all the CE related to elevating our dental skills and our dental knowledge, and as a result, we let our medical knowledge atrophy. Now, we have to remember that we're treating an entire patient. We're not just treating teeth and a mouth. So ACLS is a course that I would recommend to anybody in a heartbeat for the reasons that I listed. If you're one of those dentists who have, say, 10 courses in aesthetic anterior crown preps, why would you take another one when you have zero medical emergency training? Every single patient that sits in your chair is a potential medical emergency. Only a small subset of your patients needs aesthetic anterior crowns. So do yourself a favor, do your patients a favor, and the next CE you take, make it one dealing with medical emergencies.